In today's video, we're gonna be checking out some tips and tricks for Mac OS 13.2. This is an exciting video where you'll get to learn the basics of Mac OS and let's get started. At the very bottom, we have the dock where your most frequently used applications are. You can always add and remove applications from the dock, which we'll go into a bit more detail later. In the top left, you've got the Apple logo and the menu options. Depending on the application that you're in, your menu options will change. Right now, we're in the Finder, and the Finder is the file system for the Mac operating system. In the top right, we have the Time, we've got Control Center, and then you've got Menu Icons. We'll go into details of the Menu Icons later. But let's take a look at the next thing within Finder, Applications. When we open up Applications, you can see every single application that's installed on the Mac. Another way to access all of your applications is through the launch pad. Launch pad lives right here on the dock. It's the second option and we can tap on it and all of our applications will pop open. Inside of Finder, we can copy and paste things just like in a normal file system. So if we open up a folder here, I've got this audio file right here. If I wanna copy it, I just press Command C. And if I want to paste it, I just press Command V. And here we've got English copy. You can also use the file menu options at the top to copy and paste items. And you'll see the shortcuts right next to the item, Command C and Command V. To open an application, all you have to do is just click on the application icon. To close it, you can use Command Q on the keyboard or go to the menu bar and click on the name of the application and then quit. If you take a look at your dock, all of the applications with a dot underneath them are open. All of the applications that do not have a dot on them are closed. If I open an application, you'll see a dot appears underneath it. I can also click and hold to quit that application. If an application is not responding, you can quit it with a force quit. All you have to do is just hold down the command option escape keys and force quit applications will open up. And if it's not responding, you can click on the name of the application and then click force quit. It will ask, do you want to force quit calendar to quit? You'll lose any unsaved changes and then force quit and it will immediately close out the application that's not responding. There are multiple ways to install applications on your Mac. The easiest way is the Mac App Store. You can scroll and find an application that you like and click install. You type in your login information for your Apple ID since I just set up this Mac, it's asking, do I want to use Touch ID for future purchases? Sure. Next time I install an application, it'll ask me to authenticate with Touch ID rather than my password. And just like this, I've installed a brand new application to my Mac. You'll see the launch pad jumping and I can click on it and you'll see this application is now in my launch pad. I can also go to Finder and go to Applications and see that this application is installed on my Mac in the Applications folder. So it's very easy to set up applications using the Mac App Store. All you need is an Apple ID, you log in, and you can download or purchase any Mac app. If an app is not on the Mac App Store, when you hit the download button, it typically will download a disk image file, .dmg. And when you open that DMG, you just drag the application over to the Applications folder. Since I already have this installed, it's asking, do I want to keep them both? Do I want to replace the image file that I already have? Or do I want to stop? I'll go ahead and stop since it's already installed. And then other times, you can just install the app by clicking on the installation file and it will download the version that's the latest and then install it to your computer, extract the app and um, open it immediately. So there's multiple, multiple ways to install applications on the Mac, from the Mac App Store to downloading a disk image file to just using the install button. No matter how you install an app, it's fairly simple to get set up and they all go to your applications folder. So Clean My Mac, Daylight, Sasanima, all of these applications are in my applications folder and I can access them through the launch pad or within Finder. After you install an application using the DMG file, you can eject it by dragging it to the trash icon. And that will eject the DMG, the disk image, from your computer. And then you can drag that DMG from your downloads folder and into the trash. Another cool way to open up applications is using Spotlight. You can access Spotlight by holding down Command Spacebar. And that brings up Spotlight Search. 
and I can find files, apps, web searches, do calculations right here from Spotlight. And this purpose, we're gonna search for Spotify and hit enter, and then it opens up Spotify. So you can open up Spotify or any other app by holding down command space bar and accessing Spotlight search. You can go to the launch pad and open up Spotify or you can go to your applications folder within Finder. So there are multiple ways to open up applications. Spotlight though, in my opinion, is the fastest and my favorite. You just hold down command space bar, type in the name of the application and hit open or enter in that case. We can close Spotify by clicking and holding in the icon in the dock and then clicking quit. Next up, I wanna show you how to update your computer. You'll do that in system settings and then going to general and then going to software update. You'll wanna check this panel out as soon as you set up your computer to see if there are any pending updates for software to get installed on your Macintosh. Another helpful thing is to open up the Mac App Store and head over to updates and see what application updates are available. I updated the iMovie GarageBand pages, numbers, and keynote on January 24th. As soon as I got the computer, I updated to the latest versions. So it's very important to check out and see if you have a pending operating system update or if you have pending application updates to make sure you're on the latest software that runs very well. Next up, let's review how we can change the wallpaper. All you have to do is just control click onto your desktop and then go to change wallpaper and it opens up system settings. If you don't want to control click, you can also just go to system settings by clicking on it. There's multiple ways to get to system settings. You can click on system settings in the dock or you can click the Apple logo and go to system settings. Either way, you go to system settings and you click on wallpaper. The most simple and easiest way is to control click on the desktop and click change wallpaper and it opens up system settings wallpaper. And if we want to change the desktop wallpaper, we can click on something new and we can see it update in real time. So they've got plenty of options here that match the light and dark mode theme of the desktop. And you can download some other options here, or you can just make it a simple color. You can also add in a photo album or other files on your computer. Mac OS allows you to have multiple desktops on your computer. You can press the mission control option to see which desktops you have. You can also access this in a swipe up fe feature. You can swipe up all four fingers and get access to mission control. And here I can add a desktop in the top right. So here I have desktop two, I can add desktop three. My favorite thing about having different desktops is that you can come in here and change the wallpaper in its respective desktop. So I can change the wallpaper and have three different wallpapers on three different desktops. So if we drag this one to desktop three, we can set a different wallpaper. So now I have three desktops and they all have different wallpapers. So, so this is one of my favorite features to have, uh, depending on the desktop I'm on, it has a specific wallpaper for that desktop. Another cool thing you can do is in the dock, you can hold down on an application, go to options and then assign to a desktop. So if I want this to be on the desktop on display number one, I can assign it to that desktop. So now anytime I open it, it only opens up on display number one. I can say desktop on display number two, or I can assign to all desktops. Another cool feature in macOS is that you can open an application at login. So if I want Apple Music to open up, I can hold down on it, I can click and hold, and go to options and then say open at login. Now Apple Music will open every time I log into my computer. You can do this for any application that's in the dock. You can just hold down on it, scroll up to options, and then open at login. If you want to remove an application from the dock, all you have to do is hold down options, remove from dock. Another easy way to do this is just to drag it, click and hold and drag and remove the application. If you want to add the application back, all you have to do is just drag it back like this. And now the application is back. If you open up system settings and go to desktop and dock, you can change the orientation and position of the dock on the screen. Right now it's at the bottom. I can move it to the left or the right. Depending on which you prefer, you can go into system settings, desktop and dock, and pick which one you like best. 
Right here, we have the option to automatically hide and show the dock. So I can enable this and now the dock will disappear. If I want to access the dock, I can just bring my mouse down to the very bottom of the screen and it will reappear. But as soon as I take my mouse away from the screen, it will disappear. And this enables me to have more screen real estate for my applications and just only pull up the dock to access an application when I need to. If you take an application into full screen mode, you'll notice that the menu bar at the top disappears. You can automatically hide and show the menu bar in full screen. You can say on the desktop only. So now the menu bar is gone and I can scroll back up to the top to get access to it. Or there's another option to always hide it. I prefer the menu bar to stay and just disappear in full screen only. Another cool feature in macOS is inside of system settings under desktop and dock, if you scroll to the bottom, you have the option for hot corners. And by default, quick note is enabled. You can scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see a quick note pops up in the very corner of the screen. And if I can access that, just click on it and it will open up that note. I can also tell hot corners to do other options. Uh, so we can say, go to mission control if I insert my corner, my mouse into the top right of the screen. We can say put the display to sleep. We can say show the desktop in the left corner. Um, and then we can say application windows in, in the bottom left corner. So I've enabled these different options here. Now when I hit done, if I put my mouse in the corner of the screen, it enables mission control. If I put it in this corner of the screen, it enables my applications windows. So depending on which corner of the screen I put it in, now it shows my desktop. So that's hot corners. The next cool feature under Mac OS and system settings is internet accounts. You can add your internet account, your iCloud, your Google, your Microsoft Exchange, whatever account you have, you can add it in here in all of the Mac OS default apps like contacts, notes, mail will be enabled under that account. So when you open up the contacts, all of your data will be there. When you open up your email app, all of your data will be there. The next app I wanna show is one of the first apps that I install when I get a computer. It's called Setapp, and it's like Spotify, but for Mac applications. You pay a monthly fee around $10 plus tax, and you get access to over 200 applications. And I've installed a dozen applications from Setup on across all of my devices, and I highly recommend it. I'm going to show you a few applications that are Setup enabled uh, that I've installed, but you can see all of the applications on this Mac so far. But the first one I'm going to talk about is Clean My Mac. It's very helpful when you open up Clean My Mac and you want to see all the space on your computer and you want to get a space lens, you can come in here and build a storage map and it shows you how much space is being used on your computer by different uh, um, files, icons, and options. And it shows you on your computer what's using the most space. So I can tap into here. I can um, see that the users right now, 240 gigs of space is being taken up just by users. I can double click onto it and go into more detail and find out exactly what's taking up the most space. I can find large files and old files. This is very helpful if I need to clear up space and I see that this one video here is taking up eight gigabytes. This one file here is taking up 4.1 gigabytes. So. Clean My Mac, highly recommend for when you start to use your Mac and you want to identify large files or things that are taking up a lot of space on your computer. It also has a smart scan capability where it can clean up your Mac, it can look for malware, it can optimize the speed of your computer and do maintenance on it and uninstall applications. So I highly recommend Clean My Mac and you can get it a part of the Set App subscription. Use the link in the description below to help out the channel and get set up with Set App and I'm sure you're gonna love it. The next app and Set App that I wanna talk about is CleanShot 10. CleanShot is a better screenshot manager for the Mac operating system. And on the Mac, in order to take a screenshot, you hold down Command Shift 4. And that brings up this little crosshair here where I can select an option here on the screen. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. And CleanShot puts it right here on my screen. And I can do multiple things with it. I can double click on it and start annotating within the screenshot and start putting, you know, say I don't wanna, 
have the rating, I can blur that out. I can blur out the, the pug here. So I can annotate. It's super fun to draw. Um, I can come in here and I can use their design tools to make it look more beautiful. And I can come in here and make the screenshot my own screenshot. Um, so it has an incredible annotation platform and I can take multiple screenshots. I can take one um, of this blurred image here and it stacks it on top of each other. If I want to save the image, I just press save and it goes to my desktop. A cool feature in macOS is you can quick look. I can click on a file and press the space bar and it opens that file. I can do that for any type of file. This is a folder and I can press the space bar once I click on it and it tells me how big that folder, when it was last modified, how many items are in it. So I love the quick look feature and I can come in here and save this annotation here save it as we can go to my desktop and then i can quick look into this option too so now that i'm done with that i've got screenshots here and i can quick look by pressing the space bar and it opens up these screenshots thanks for watching today's video on mac os tips and tricks we hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up consider commenting below and even giving us a super thanks to help out the channel we can't wait to continue making content for you and we hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching